Welcome to Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. We're talking about Spider-Man, The Return of the Sinister Six. We actually did the sequel to this, like, years ago. Mm -hmm. So now we're doing that. It's all out of sequence. Who cares? Wait a minute. This We did the sequel to, to The Return? Story. Yeah, we did Revenge of the Sinister Six. Which was the third one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is Return of the Sinister Six. Will we ever do the original Sinister Six? I doubt it. Will... Mm. I'll tell you why, though. Because the original Sinister Six was Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 from the 60s, in which the first formation of the Sinister Six occurs. Mm -hmm. And then 25 years later, they decide to do it again. This is the next time oh, the wow. Sinister Six ever gets together. And you're like, I assume the Sinister Six has been, has been doing things all the time. Why? No. No. Like, this, this iconic, alliterative <laughs> device of having Spider-Man's rogues teaming up it was just literally Sam going, how about the first six characters we created all join forces? Like that's, mm -hmm. And then Spider-Man beats them by fighting them each one at a time and makes fun of them for allowing that to be the way they're defeated. <laughs> Boy, if you guys all attacked me at the same time, I'd be, you might have had I'd a be chance. I'd be mincemeat. Forget yeah. about it. <laughs> like, oh. Oh, well, we've already been defeated, so we can't possibly do that again. And nobody had that idea. And then, after that, they formed, someone else formed a sinister syndicate Different team, different roster. It's like, what What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why, but like Michelinie and Eric Larson get together and, and reform the Sinister Six. Of course, by this point, in 1991, Craven the Hunter, who was originally a founding member of the Sinister Six, killed himself mm. in Craven's Last Hunt. So they gotta, re they gotta, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta replace him. With whom? How about the Hobgoblin? <sighs> That's just as crazy. Not Roderick Kingsley, Hobgoblin, who's like a criminal mastermind and actually like sane. How about Jason McIndale, proto demo goblin that's hobgoblin? That's literally the only hobgoblin I'm familiar. Yeah, that's with. that's your only context for hobgoblin. That's, that's all I have is that. Before you get any further into this, <laughs> and I commit to sitting here, there's not going to be any sort of old man who has control over apes but doesn't have a name <laughs> related to that at all. You mean like the Red Ghost? <laughs> like him? No. There's there are plenty of old men in this book. Okay. But none of them command. Yeah, vultures in this, right? Yeah, vultures in this. That's fine. Aunt May's fiance, Nathan Lebensky. Okay. Is okay. in this. I don't care. I just need to know. No, the okay. Red Ghost is not in this. Nor his super apes. Fantastic. Don't worry about it. Go now, ahead. Is this uh, hobgoblin? who was Ned Leeds, but actually no. then was something else? No, or? you see, that was real Hobgoblin. Human uh -huh. Hobgoblin, who just stole Norman Osborn's gear, dyed it another color, right. and then used it to kind of take over the underworld. This is an impersonator Hobgoblin who died on the job, whose soul went to hell, and then came back as a demon man. Oh. This is the Hobgoblin from that Spirits of Venom, Spirits of Venom book that oh, we did. He also okay. appears in Revenge of the Sinister Six because he's just so cool and popular. Right. But still, again, before they decide, screw it, let's separate the demon that's attached to Mackendale's soul and Mackendale himself, and then we'll have Mackendale as the Hobgoblin, again, just kind of Doing yeah. bouncing around, like Roger Kingsley slash Ned Leeds, but different. And the demon who was accustomed to flying on gliders and having a whole a whole <laughs> shtick, he goes by Demo Goblin. Right. It's a blue suit, and he's and he has the exact same MO as the aforementioned Hobgoblin of the nineties. Right. But now all uh, on his own. No, like no morality. He's a demon that just like was shaped by this, like, this yeah, by this the works. affectations yeah. oh, of his what? host. Pretty cool, yeah. Right. I it, think I will do this. Yeah. Like, it, what would you have done? It would be like <laughs> if demonic possession like were a real thing, and then they decided like, oh well, you're a banker. That's what I'm gonna do when I go back to hell. <laughs> or if I stay here, I'm just gonna <laughs> affect that. It would be like if Pazuzu, the demon attached to Reagan from The Exorcist, then after being separated, just was like, I, I like being a little girl. I'm gonna play with dollies. <laughs> Yeah, and like, but I'll like be real creepy about right, it. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like if demons got their marching orders from from possession. Yeah, that's so stupid. 
Yes. What a weird time. <laughs> you know, people talk about how Spider-Man's like the street level character who's like, yeah, yeah. like he's so relatable. You know, yeah, like since when? Yeah. Remember that time that he relatably went to space and came back with an alien that just sat on him as a costume, then separated from him, you know, because of bells, and then became an evil dark mirror version of him, but with a mouth? and an obsession with revenge, and protection of the innocent, and then asexually reproduced and made another version of a star monster who just murdered people? How relatable is Spider-Man? Well, that's not every day. Well, what about it's a lot of days. What about communist uh, ape wranglers? <laughs> we don't talk about him. I, you, you said we weren't going to talk about him. Yeah. You, you broke or your promise. Or demo goblins. But who's the primo goblin? <laughs> I think Norman Osborn's the primo guy, right? <laughs> anyway, so the story, this, this story is ridiculous. I also Sweet. love it. Okay. okay. Like, as a kid, I was just, I was just, and it really was, you know what it is. You see Eric Larson's work in the 90s, and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm having an amazing time. Yeah. And I'm not just, even well, reading the Well, it looks great, words. so it must be great. Right, exactly. <laughs> that being said, now, Michelinie infuses a lot of character. He does the thing that you're supposed to do with a Spider-Man story, which is, you got the A story, which is Spider-Man. You got the B story, which is Peter Parker. You got two stories going on. Mm -hmm. But, of course, at this point, Peter Parker is married, so... Sometimes, if you were creative, you're like, how about Peter Parker's story is boring, let's just make it Mary Jane's story. So Mary mm. Jane has the B plot. Her life is way more interesting. It, it's true. Yeah. Because She's like a starlet point, or something. And, and she is, at this point, an actress on a soap opera called Secret Hospital, which we've mentioned on this yeah, show. Is the hospital we've talked secret? About. I don't know. I would love to find out what the inner workings of Secret Hospital is. Yeah. It's more like, within the hospital, there's a secret hospital. Secrets. Of I bet the secret is everyone's fucking... <laughs> We haven't seen the Sinister Six reform yet, ever. Story opens, right. Electro is going to go steal this like mega conductor that will amplify his powers tenfold. Sure. And it's behind. Was he gonna carry it around with him or <laughs> does it permanently upgrade his powers? The whole thing is a fiction. He's oh. just a dupe. But it's behind an impenetrable vault that only Electro could possibly get through. And once he gets through it. Which he gets through by just zapping the lock with electricity. Well, that's how he gets through the door. Oh. Now, when he gets to. <laughs> the vault, Spider-Man shows up to fight him. Sure. And uh, while they're fighting, Dr. Octopus emerges from the vault. And Dr. Octopus created the superconductor concept, organized events so that Electro would hear about it and be goaded into going after it. Mm. And then he distracts Spider-Man with his arms while he negotiates a collaboration with Electro. Is that easier than, like, calling him? <laughs> well, well, Electro doesn't, doesn't exactly have a, have a public phone number. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, you, if he knew that Electro was around at all, yes. I feel like he could have found him. Well, it's also... Well, here's the thing. It's about showing, not telling, right? You could have a scene where Dr. Octopus uses his mob connections or his underworld connections to find, arrange a meeting, yeah. a meet-cute, if you will, between right. him and Electro. Instead, we're demonstrating what a master planner Doc Ock is and how mm. he's, his reach is you know, quite far. And in fact, uh, I didn't just come up with that term. Doc Ock is the master planner. When they ran out of ideas for Doc Ock, you know, guy with metal arms who cares. Right. They went, oh, let's invent this like mystery character called the Master Planner who's just using his intelligence to arrange crimes and whatnot. And Spider-Man can't figure out who it is. And then it's revealed it's just Doc Ock. It's just He's Doc like, Ock. I'm also just smart. I'm a genius. I made these arms. Right. I could also like plan, I'm plan also, like, intricate crimes. Stealing Kingpin's fashion sense. Well now yeah, the right? I'm glad you brought up the fashion sense because I love this version of Doc Ock. It's really? my favorite version of Doc Ock. Okay. Bar none. Do you prefer the green tight suit on a man who's like but, obese? Well, it is more classic. It yeah, is, well, he's I more like classy, it. but I don't know. I've seen him in. I feel like I would have put him in a different color. Than white? Yeah. Maybe a green suit. He's had the oh. green. He's not the Riddler. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're missing the message here because he's a, he's a scientist, so it's like it's mirroring the lab coat aesthetic. Maybe it should have been like a reddish color, like octopus. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Or change his color. Yes. I guess he could invent that. Does, is there a hole in the back, cut in the back of his jacket so the no, no, arms can get out? No, they come out the side. 
Well, there are holes there. Oh. The, the arms make the holes. Does he have more arms? Does he have no, like... No, they're just really long. The arms are Because it looks like... Expansive. It looks like book. there's six arms. Because they're... No, I guess because no, they're just folding. looping around. Yeah. No, the arms are ridiculous. This drawing looks like a Dr. Seuss drawing. It does. With the arms. Yes. That's ridiculous. Well, it's it's only going to get more ridiculous How, as we go. I feel like those arms are so long, they're just a problem. Like, just walking around well, would be difficult. So let me let me, let me me talk about this for a minute because it's really... I, I think it's really cool. Eric Larson, the artist on this dictated a lot of the design and character choices for Doc Ock in this book. Mm -hmm. uh, he hated the green jumpsuit uh. that Doc Ock wears. And so do I. I'm and every time they I'm cram a... him in it, I think it's stupid. I'm not saying I'm a big fan. No, I but just... you just want something else. Yeah. But the point <laughs> is, he, he, uh, he was actually... Eric Larson at the time in the 90s was like working in an artist studio. And he had like a number of other artists working. And one of the artists was playing with color forms. Remember color forms? No. No, I don't know it's what like you're talking about. Little, little like sticky characters you can put like into different scenarios. It's like for children. Oh. Oh. And the color forms that they were playing with were based on the Dick Tracy Warren Beatty movie. <sighs> and if you're familiar with that movie in any way, it is very much the comic strip come to life where it's just gangsters from the 30s wearing these like big, bombastic, loud gangster suits. And Larson always considered Doc Ock to be a kind of gangster. And he wanted to kind of go with the lab coat aesthetic, but also give him a little bit of class. Oh, that's why it's a white. So that's why it's a white suit. It's like, and it's not just a business suit. It's like a gangster's 30s kind of suit. And the yes, other thing was... he is a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that he wanted to do was, he's like, Doc Ock is a guy. And in fact, later on when they come up with a completely more drastic design choice for Doc Ock, it's coming from the idea of Doc Ock's a regular guy who fights people with extraordinary abilities. Right. The, 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 the superpower is the arms. And later on, of course, they'll reveal that, like, from severe head trauma of being beaten by superpowered <laughs> characters, he will, like, develop brain cancer. Yeah. Or but, like... What? It, yeah. Yeah, that was in one of the books we did. But instead, in this... <sighs> It's more that Doc Ock is just a guy with these the arms yeah, of the he's power. He's not the only one who's just a guy. Isn't yeah. Scorpion just a guy well, no, with he's, a Scorpion suit? Uh, he's got like augmented strength as well. Oh, he does. Yeah, the oh. suit gives him that kind of thing. Mm. But in any case, uh, Doc Ock's arms are the power, and so in this book in particular, Doc Ock will do mundane things, the things that he would do as a regular person, and let the arms do the work. The arms are long and powerful and strong. <laughs> right. Let the arms do the work. So. In every panel with Doc Ock, he will be doing like, he'll be smoking or pouring himself a cocktail or like making a phone call while the arms are fighting Spider-Man. So the arms are having an entire battle with Spider-Man while he's just chatting it up with Electro. That's kind of cool. And I, I love that because it's like- need to pay attention? The arms are the, like, it's like if you were doing a mundane task in your brain while you were like doing something else, like, you know. Except, okay. except the arms are doing something very complicated yes. and difficult. While he yeah. is also but carrying on a cogent conversation. Yes, or he's. But doing he is something. a genius. He is a genius, so I think he can apportion. And he's had years of experience mastering those arms, so it's like having four extra arms. And it's like if you had two arms and you could do two different things, then if you had six arms, you could probably do at least four different things. <laughs> so he's he's fighting Spider-Man. So he essentially says like, "Hey, Electro, join the Sinister Six again," and he's like. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you have a way out of here? So then Doc Ock just breaks open the ceiling and they leave. Okay. Spider-Man's like, that was weird. Damn it. Yes. He's like, shit. So the, the plot of this story is outrageous. Peter Parker is a graduate student at Empire State University, of course, where he got his degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's working with characters named like Doc Swan and Anne-Marie. Uh, we've referenced them before. Uh, Wait, is this like Anne Marie? Like no, not Anna Maria Marconi, who uh, would later on okay. become Doc Ock's greatest love. Yes. No, total coincidence. What? Yes. Weird. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so many names. Right. Some of them are gonna sound the same. I don't know. Maybe. What? No, there's lots of names. <laughs> yeah. No, there's actually a yeah. name for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have the same name, though. True. And if you have enough characters, eventually some of them are gonna be similar. I think it's more like if you have a big spider fan like Dan Slott, you're gonna get incepted oh, by maybe. your many years of reading. Yeah. And accidentally name someone after a character that literally no one cares about or remembers. Mm. That's fair. <laughs> Doc Swan, Amory, and the Empire State University staff are essentially working on this like energy project, this alternate energy source. Oh. Of course, in the 90s, we got to work about, we got, we got to do a story about alternate energy. Right. Um, it's, like, it's like a prototype. It's like a research. No, well, it's a research. Uh, so they, they actually, in Long Island, they built a rocket 
that is going to go into space and launch a probe that is going to analyze the magnetic ley lines across the Earth. And they're hoping that it will be able to tap into, or that way later on in the future they'll be able to tap into these magnetic ley lines and use those as an alternate fuel source, you know, from fossil fuels instead. No, not to right. be confused with the magical ley lines. No, yeah, that is the only ley line that exists, is magical ley lines. Yeah. <laughs> ley lines are horseshit. Well, Doctor Strange taps into those. Yes. Into, into Shambhala. Right. And and it's in fact a thing that, like, if you are an occultist or if you have any dabbling in, like, the... Yeah, Doctor Strange didn't invent the concept. No. He no. existed. But, like, Marvel Universe has experience with this. Yeah, yeah. so it would so, make sense. But, like, but no, this is magnetic. a different thing. This is magnetic. Or, like, science is like, no, we don't believe in magic, this, but we still there, want to tap are, into it. There are ley lines. So, so it's just they're the, literally referencing when you draw a magnetic field, you draw lines to, like, visually depict it. Yes, that. But, like, but no, there actually are lines, though. Right. Yeah, but there's not. <laughs> no, but there are. And we're going to... like we're a gonna, continuous yeah. thing. No, and no, we're going to no, see no, if we can tap into the magnetic fields of the earth it's to like use its power. If you could go into space and you look down, you see all the little lines running to the states. Yeah. Kind of a color to... Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Those lines are there. Yeah. They wouldn't draw them if they weren't there. Right. That would be lying. Yeah. yeah. How do we know <laughs> the shape of the state? <laughs> we wouldn't just arbitrarily determine what land no, is. No, someone went up in the air and saw them and yeah. then... And they were like, oh, okay. Well, that's where New Jersey right. is. Right, we didn't okay. even know what Tennessee looked like until the space program. <laughs> so... That's the that's the program is and they so like they built an entire space program in Long Island. They're gonna launch a rocket ship into the sky. Okay. And they're gonna right. analyze these ley lines, which Doc Ock hears about, and he's got, he's formulated a plan, and he oh, needs wow, five Parker, patsies, I mean partners, to help <laughs> execute said plan. Peter Parker is part of a rocket launch. He's yeah. only he's ancillary. A literal no, rocket he's scientist. part of like the 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 planning phase. They've okay. already gotten to the like. He's just right. He's they're contracting out the. He's rocket. part of exactly. the getting coffee phase of it. He <laughs> no. He's a grad student. He's a grad student. So he's, he's probably doing, doing a lot of work for very little compensation, if yes. any. Right. Yes. <laughs> he gets a stipend. So he's talking to Doc Swan, and then suddenly a temp runs in and goes, "He's here!" And Pete's like, "Who's here?" And then they go to the roof, and Iron Man arrives, and oh. he's like, "Mr. Stark," because at this point. Iron Man is Tony Stark's bodyguard, and his right. secret identity is a secret. Sure. He goes, Mr. Stark has lent you this incredible sciency looking machine, which you can use to help with your with your energy project. So here you go. Too bad I can't stay and help. The Avengers need me, and he flies away. And Peter Parker's like, what a show off. I'll show him. So then he sneaks off, dresses as Spider-Man, Swings up to the roof and goes, Hey guys, I just saw you had this big metal doohickey. Where do you need it? And lifts it up with his incredible strength. They're like, You can put it anywhere. <laughs> oh, hey, Spider Man. Yeah, wherever is fine. Thanks. Yeah. yeah he's what? like, Oh no, I have been coming and going as Spider Man from Empire State so much that no one's impressed with me. And that's the point of being Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> what am I even doing? Which is a classic Peter Parker trope is his, yeah. is his delicate ego, which needs to be massaged by strangers. <laughs> yeah. That's that's his plot. His plot is that Iron Man what? upstaged him in like One on, time. on his turf. Wow. Without even knowing he was there. And so he's feeling kind of bad about it. Which like uh, okay. So objectively speaking that sucks mm -hmm. and it's not a plot. But when you think about like people and especially one that has like at this point a 60 year history or whatever, yeah, some people are going to be sensitive right. about their machismo. You know, Peter Parker is a delicate flower sometimes. Yeah. And we're looking at that right now. Listen, if you if, if you have a Truman Show-esque camera on a person all the time, they're not going to always have the most flattering vantage point. <laughs> we're looking at this period in Spider-Man's history when, like, Mary Jane was working for a run-of-the-mill fourth-tier <laughs> soap opera, and Peter Parker's like a temp in a you know, graduate program, and his ex-girlfriend Felicia is banging his best friend Flash Thompson oh. to make him jealous. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's weird that Mary Jane's show is seemingly run by Guy Gardner. Oh. <laughs> the bowl cut was very popular in 1991. <laughs> 
Yikes. <laughs> Who is this character with her? That's, and what is happening uh, with her hair? Well, right now we're looking in on a sequence that is being shot for Secret Hospital. Right. In which Mary Jane and one of her co-stars are having a caddy back and forth. Right. And the director <laughs> is shouting cut because Mary Jane flubbed her line. She said oh. she said that instead of your. And he's like, if you can't even do the do the do the do the acting properly, at least get the lines right. Ah, I'm taking five. Yeesh. And she's like, whoa, what a dick. And Mary Jane's co-star is like, actually, he's pretty cool most of the time, but his wife is an alcoholic. Oh. And she's oh. like, oh, I'm sorry. She like, well, says his wife drinks like a carp. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, oh, jeez. So then the director is like, oh, man, I can't believe I blew up at Mary Jane, who's like, at this point, a relatively new starlet. She's right. still up and coming. And he knows, like, she's, she, like Peter, probably has a delicate ego as well. <laughs> and so he tells his 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 handler to send some flowers to Mary Jane's room and an apology mm. note. And then a light fixture falls from the sky and hits him in the head. <gasps> Whoa. And he's dead. He is not dead. But he's... No. A gigantic light just fell on his he's head. He's dead. He's, he's dead. He's very Look at this hurt. light. It's bigger than his body. Yeah, I know. No. And that hit him directly in and the it face. it fell from the roof. I know. From the ceiling. Oh, is he going to put on a mask? No. And then he's uh, not gonna put a cape and then, you know... It's the phantom director. <laughs> no, he... he <laughs> He just is hurt so badly he has to go to the hospital. They're like, he's barely breathing. So okay. he goes to the hospital. Well, it's because he doesn't have a nose anymore. Right. Or a head. Yeah, or it's that. It's all smashed in. Yeah. That makes breathing hard. Yeah. Listen, that bowl cut isn't just for show. It's also a reinforced steel cap that he wears at all times. <laughs> because oh, he's in a hard head area. Right. Anyway, so Pete and, uh, and, and Mary Jane well, By the go, way, this dress, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is the most leg I've ever seen from a dress. That yeah. is... Remember, they're in a they're in a soap opera. Yes, that's so true. So it is supposed to be kind of trashy. That, yeah. that is way less dress and more. I'm a gymnast. Yeah. 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 Now that said, Larson is no stranger to giving you a little bit of leg. Yeah. In I, these books, there's going to be a moment where Mary Jane's doing crunches, and you tell me how egregious that is. <laughs> so, Pete and Mary Jane go to Aunt May's house, where of course she is living with her fiance Nathan Lebensky, who at this point has a terminal heart condition. Mm. So he's on his way out. Sure. That's, and Aunt May still looks like she's a hundred. Yep. I think she's and, more and like she hasn't aged a day since the sixties, <laughs> which is to say she's she 100. was one hundred and fifty years old in nineteen sixty-three. <laughs> yeah. So Nathan's being weird, and he runs out, and Pete's like, "Well, he doesn't run." Nathan, well, he's not he rolls anywhere. out real fast. <laughs> so Peter's like, he's very suspicious. The last time that we looked in on Nathan. He was withdrawing money from Aunt May's bank account to pay off gambling debts. Oh boy. So Peter has reason to follow him around. Right. So Nathan goes to the bank and he's there like all day. So Peter wastes his entire day. What's he doing in there? What's he doing in there? So then he comes out and he's immediately chased by hoods who try to steal the bag of money that Nathan is carrying from the bank. Okay. Was that the the alien suit saga or whatever? Or the alien No, that was costume? the saga of the alien costume. That's it. Uh, That's the one I hate. Because of, cause of the red ghost, I know. But no, after <laughs> yeah. that, then McFarlane and Michelinie introduced Venom oh, in okay. another story. And because in that one. one, he was giving Peter a hard time about like... Yeah, because Nathan's a dick about that. Dude. Yeah, Nathan is constantly a douche. <laughs> cool. He's always riding Peter. So yeah. Peter sees these hoods chase Nathan into the park. He dresses Spider-Man. He kicks their ass. The I scene. love the expressions on the the mask, the Spider-Man mask. Yes, in this book. Larson really pushed it. Yeah, I mean, the series <laughs> to, to indicate you know what he's what he's feeling. Yeah. So otherwise, just an expressionless like. You know, yeah, image. that's great. He gets his eyes narrow. Yeah, I, what's happening physically with the physically, mask? Nothing. <laughs> that is that is artistic license to demonstrate uh, how Peter is feeling in the suit without doing the split face and while also kind of like <laughs> testing himself artistically. So yeah. is this post McFarlane drawing yes, him? Naturally. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. No, uh, Larson picked up after McFarlane. Yeah. It, okay. it's... You can feel the influence. Yeah. yeah big yep. time. But yep. Larson is also affecting his own style. You'll see like a no, lot he is, of Larson. He's pushing in here. the like motion and angles that you're seeing Spider Man from totally. and like even like the face mask, like seeing that chin like that. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, Pete's fighting them. One of the hoods gets the drop on Nathan and holds a knife to his throat. It's not hard to do. I was naturally. Say, not going he's anywhere not, yeah. fast. And uh, so Pete's like, okay, I can't take him on head on. And then this old lady in the park hits the assailant in the face with her walking cane. Nice. And says, we, we New Yorkers got to stick together. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. 
which is way more earned than it is in the movie. Right. And that, that's uh, more like we old folks got to stick that's together. That's basically yeah. it. And he yeah. and, and so uh, you know Spider Man helps pick up Nathan's bag, which is full of money, and he's like, "Whoa!" And Nathan goes, "That's mine. Give me that." And he goes, "Ah, thanks." And he rolls off. And Spider Man's like, "What a dick!" And the old lady's like, "He's got one foot in the grave. We're all mm. kind of grumpy like that." Well. He's like, all of us old folk are, are upset because we're dying. Because yeah. we know we're going to die sooner than you. And he's like, oh, that's sad. So Peter follows Nathan home. Nathan comes back. That's it. Yeah. So Peter's like, what's so he doesn't up with the find money? out anything at all. No. It's a useless uh, diversion. Well, no, we're, it's setting up. You know, this is a this is serialized He has a lot every, of money. Why does he have why that money? Why does he have all Where that money? Where did he get it from? What's he doing it with? What's and he doing we got to have it? a fight in there so something happens. Yeah, we got to well we're going to lose you if you get, you know, if you just see an old man take money out and Peter muses to himself, what's going on with that? You know, you're, you're going to quit. You're going to throw the comic book in the garbage and you're going to quit them forever to go play those stupid video games we've right. been hearing so much about. Right. No, no, we got to get some <laughs> we got to get some action in here. So yeah, then another we cut Dr. Seuss panel. Jeez. Well, you, <laughs> you're going to see those arms. Oh, they're going to zipping all over the place. Uh, San, uh, every member of the Sinister Six gets a kind of like showcase moment. Sandman, yes, however, was a former member of the Sinister Six when it started. Now in the 90s, is kind of like an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. He's on his way to becoming a hero. He will eventually become an Avenger. What? That's how desperate and pathetic the Avengers were at that point. <laughs> and, uh, I but, mean, he would be really powerful, right? Oh, naturally. He can make himself into sand. He can't die. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Doc Ock strong arms Sandman into joining despite his anti-hero status. Sandman, of course, immediately refuses. But Doc Ock reveals that as they are at the house that Sandman is boarding, mm -hmm. Doc Ock reveals, like, there's a package there for you. It's wired to explode. There's a family that lives in this house. I could have addressed that package to anyone in this house. So you work for me or I'll kill everybody that works that, that, that lives in this house that you board at. Wow. And Sandman's like, you're an asshole. And he's like, yeah. Now get now get you going. Ugh. So then, uh, you know, Doc Ock invites Hobgoblin to replace Craven the Hunter's ghost. Uh -huh. And does he specifically call him a replacement for? We just it's we like, just I know need that six. I need six. And one of them's dead. So <laughs> so I'll go with the Goblin. You. I won't invite Shocker or Scorpion or nope. Hydro Man. Nope. Or anyone Goblin's else. Goblin's hot right now. That's exactly what it is. Look, Goblin, for some reason the readers love you, so you're, you're in. in. <laughs> yeah. You look cool, and Larson's going to draw you pretty rad. I guess it's because he, he needs a cool. wild card. Yeah. He most certainly does not. You it, need someone who's going to totally screw you over because right. they're mm. crazy. Yeah. Hobgoblin, for, as far as I recall, has really no crucial role in this story. He's really? just in it to be cool looking. I feel like he should be overly powerful. I agree. He as is a, a demon. demon. Yeah. With pumpkin bombs. Yeah, and those pumpkin bombs don't come Look from like a this. factory. Oh, this the is Batman. the Batman logo um, in the pumpkin face. Listen. DC is not pouring over these books looking for, you know, for That's the literal here. Batman logo. No, That's just, the literal 1989 movie Batman me, that's logo. That's just a bat, okay? They <laughs> that's can't what copyright bats look like. a some, bat. Yeah, excuse bats me. Bats are associated with <gasps> demons and, and Halloween, Halloween, which yeah. of course is all his MO. And pumpkins. Yeah, and this is just, this is just a... Literal, accurate drawing. That's just what bats look like. That's what bats like. look like, man. Yep. Bats look like the actual Batman logo. Yes. It's not my fault. Okay. You can't copyright a bat. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's literally... Yeah, he's they, just like, they, okay, I'm in. They literally threaten to kill each other, and he's like, you interest me. But who gives a shit? Hub Goblin, right. you're in. Yep. Craven's Ghost, you're, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> we almost did the sequel to Craven's Last Hunt. In which Craven's ghost appears, and I was like, "This is too. This is too dark." Does he go? Ooh. Yeah, more or less. It's, it's a little sad. I was like, "It's too really? sad. I don't want to get sad." I don't want to be sad. No, I'll wait for Ben. I'll make him sad. <laughs> Let Ben be sad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man goes to check out the launch. Meanwhile, Obadiah Stane has hired industrial espionage people to go and sabotage, or at least steal secrets about this ley line rocket launch. <sighs> Spider-Man kicks his ass immediately. That that never comes back into play. It's just, ah. we, we're going to lose you. Got to get, a, yeah. gotta get an action bam, sequence bam, bam, bam. How often in this book will it just be like, here's some important parts of the story, but we think we're, you're being bored. Random fight? Yeah, yes. fight. Uh, every time. Cool. Literally every time. So Mary Jane is visited by a member of the New York City Police Department. Mm. His name is Officer Goldman. Officer Goldman also has a horrible... Bowl cut? Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Goldman is there to investigate the attack on Mary Jane's director. Attack? Well, yeah, because they checked the line. 
Okay. And it was cut. It was <gasps> cut. And they think dun, Mary Jane dun, did it because he, sna he snapped it. Right? Yeah. No, no. They're like, she shimmied up there <laughs> in those heels and that dress. Yeah. No. Without anyone it's, it's actually more diabolical. They oh. suspect Jonathan Caesar is back because he's out on proba probation. Whoa, really? Yep. Who is that? Yeah. Who is Jonathan Caesar? What? Well, there is a character that we referenced, I think, only in our first episode ever. Okay. Which is Jonathan Caesar, a rich psychopath who, who, who got obsessed with Mary Jane and kidnapped her. And she had to free herself from his, you know, grip. There's a whole story arc where Mary Jane is kidnapped and she's in the apartment complex that she and Peter live in that is owned by Jonathan Caesar, this, like, wealthy psychopath. And eventually, you know... She frees herself, and then Spider-Man and she reunite, and then they file charges against Jonathan Caesar, and he goes to jail. But Jonathan Caesar's like this, like it's like it's Mary Jane's antagonist. <laughs> okay. Is this is this crazy gotcha. creepy dude who's like, I saw you in magazines, I saw you on TV, I saw you in this movie, that Schwarzenheimer movie. I killed your director. Yeah, I, and I, maybe I'm killing your director because you were mean. He was mean to you. Oh. Oh. But yeah, so he's he's getting out on bail, and so Goldman suspects Caesar. Okay. He's back. So he's just let her know, like, be careful. Right. He's back. Well, and, and I'm kind of like, you're going to be your security detail. Like, I've been assigned to kind of oh. check on this case, and I feel like you're the object of it. Right. Despite the fact that it was your director was attacked, I think that you were kind of like the reason that happened in the first place. Right. Oh, good. Great. Thanks. It's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. She, she <laughs> no, has no I'm... responsibility for it whatsoever. So, uh, you know, we, we Peter's going to go on a photo assignment. Mm -hmm. Mary Jane goes with him. Uh, so they go to this, like, you know, this expo. <laughs> and they run into... Uh, Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson and Alicia Hardy. I was literally going to be like, can you please address look these at this, two lunatics? Look at this. Look these at, outfits are first amazing. First of all, he's I got know. a downvote on his dick. Yeah, well, yep. you know. Well, that didn't mean downvote at that time. It was, well, it popular. does now. No, and that look was, at this. This is where the action is. <laughs> yeah, no, but now that, it's like, click. No, nah, I'm thinking no. Not a fan. No. <laughs> And Fake. I don't even know what to say about Felicia. Felicia's outfit. Well, it's cat themed. It's cat themed, but it's also neon green. Well, because it's 1991. Right. Okay. Yep, that's it. Uh, Flash and Felicia are actually going to visit Pete and Mary Jane. Like that? Like this? Yep. I thought you were going to say to the gym. I think they're coming from the gym. Oh, okay. It usually get changed. <laughs> Not these two. Not these two. When you got the goods, you show them off. Yep. Wow. So. <laughs> But, uh, but amazing. Pete and Mary Jane know about Felicia's dual identity, and Flash does not. Oh. And so they're actively avoiding hanging out with them. Right. Because they know that it's all phony. Right. And they don't want to give Felicia the satisfaction. So meanwhile, Flash thinks his friends are avoiding him for no reason. Right. He's like, my friends are avoiding me, but, I mean... Look at her. I, yeah. I'm wearing this stupid outfit for her. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not wearing this for my own aesthetic health here. No one's... <laughs> I mean, look at the look at the arrow. <laughs> that's it. Just like, hey, can you believe that this is also happening in the book? Yeah. Like, that's what they Crazy talk about. Crazy stuff. So they just put bright colors on the page to distract us. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and it worked. So Peter and Mary Jane go to this like convention center where Captain America is doing a demonstration. Mm, By the way, Captain America in the book. Nice. The, the, that's the thing is that like, moved organically into the story. Right. So th and that's kind of deliberately a, a kind of fun wink and a nod in the previous story. They reference, like, other heroes in the Marvel Universe. In this, Spider-Man will have to fight six of his rogues at once. And, you know, we're not telling dopey stories in the 60s anymore. It's going to be real stakes here. We're talking about, like, you know, ley lines and space shuttles. And, <laughs> right, real stakes. And, 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 uh, and sex and murder from the soap opera set. And stalkers. Right. Yeah, stalkers and, yeah. and, and, and would-be murderers. You know, there's a lot at stake here. And uh, so... We are referencing, you know, so, so the stakes have never been higher for Spider-Man. So sure. We're referencing all these heroes in the greater Marvel Universe that are not going to help Spider-Man fight these characters. It's like almost a crossover. Yes. Like, oh, look not at that quite. Iron Man. If only Peter had known that the Sinister Six were getting together, he might have been able to ask him for help. Right. Captain America's here. Again, all he knows is Doc Ock and Electro have teamed up. Right. So, uh... I, I guess I feel like they should have their um, fingers on the pulse of well, what's happening in right? New York. The Avengers are operating on the West Coast right now. Oh. 
Well, why is Cap here then? Uh, he's performing or whatever. Yeah, he's doing a. He's, he's, he's performing. He is. Yeah. He's literally performing. Like, they're, they're redoing a fight he did once, and I think that it's like a charity benefit. I'm sorry, yeah. that is beyond kind of pathetic. Well, that's Captain Cap America was pretty pathetic in 1991. Hey, Cap, could you come by and redo a stage fight yes. that yes. you had? Yeah. We don't know what to do with you. You're a man out of time. Also, I don't like, know, I don't, I don't know. know, do some flips or something? He's like, yeah, I can yeah. do that. Okay, cool. How much? Yeah. I'll take the Quinjet and fly out here, which indeed he does. He there takes the go. Quinjet out there to pretend fight something. Yep. Yeah. And then he leaves. And then he yep. leaves. So he fights the, the, the fake robot monster thing and... You know, meanwhile, Peter's taking pictures, and everyone's like, Woo, Cap, we love you! And he's, and, you know, Peter's still feeling pretty sore from that Iron Man inadvertent show up that he experienced before. Right. So he's like, Wait a minute. I know how to get my, my erection back. I'll take out my press pass, and I'll impress my wife by introducing her to Captain America. Right. Show that I can do things. I'm kind of impressive here. Uh -huh. So he takes out his press pass, he brings his wife backstage, and the, the, the stagehand is like, Oh, the Capster, he just left. And the Quinjet's like, shoom. Oh. And he's like, damn it. And then his spider sense goes off and Shocker has appeared. Shocker is robbing this fundraiser. Oh, no. He waited for Captain America to leave. I love the idea that Cap finishes the show. Leaves. Just leaps into the Quinjet. He's like, yep. he, is, he runs he, off stage he, into the Quinjet. Cap, that is very believable. Yeah. Listen, he leaves in the exact rapidity and urgency <laughs> that George Carlin left the last live show I ever saw him at. Yeah. It's Waterloo Village. He does this whole set. And then he goes, good night. And he runs. <laughs> And you could see him back, you could see the curtain flap. There was a car oh waiting with the door open. He ran into the car and it drove away before we could even get up from our seats. That's awesome. Well, I mean, but Captain America's like a hero. He's a man of the people. He's from New York. I yeah. feel like. Yeah. I raised money for the library. Nope. I threw my shield, my real vibranium shield. Yep. I brought the real one. At this prop. I danced like a I, monkey for you people. I'm I not shaking hands. I might have killed someone. And then I left. That's why he left. Like I was on fire. One of those stunned people is not getting back up. <laughs> so, shocker attack. So, so Peter. So, shocker's in the book, too. So, shocker. He's not in the Sinister Six. But he's not in the Sinister We didn't invite shocker. Right. This is just you, a thing Herman. that happened. This, like, is a, this is a one off. Herman's like, it could be seven. Seven's yeah. alliterative. It's, yeah, it's still thin. She's like seven. looking in the window. Yeah. No. Doc Ock's like, get the hell out of here, Herman! <laughs> it's seven, it's just one more. <laughs> He beats it's the Michael him. Bay method of storytelling. It's not bad. It works. Yeah. It, he he defeats Shocker by throwing concession butter at the wall behind him, making Shocker think that he was trying to hit him with it, thereby allowing the butter to ooze under Shocker's feet. <laughs> and then he hangs there and goes, "Why don't you give me your best shot, and then I'll take mine." And Shocker just 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 juices up, gets ready for a big zap. And then he fires, and it just launches him into the wall behind him, and he <laughs> knocks himself unconscious. And Pete's like, damn it, I didn't bring my camera. Like, I didn't take any picture of this fight. This was for nothing. And then the, the, the throng... It's for nothing! No, be well, because it was, I didn't get anything out of this. I defeated Shocker, that's it. <laughs> Classic that's what you're supposed spider to do. Man. Yeah, but right now, like, I always try and, like, Yeah, but I'm trying to impress my it. wife right now. Right, well, also, I feel I'm trying inadequate to for no reason. Well, but yeah. then all the, all, the, all the people who were there, they run mm. to him, and they, like... They shower him with praises, and Mary Jane says, "Soak it up, hon. You deserve it." Oh, like he gets, he, and that's that plot is closed. He no okay. longer feels inadequate. He All can right. achieve erections again. He's good to go. It started about the time that Mary Jane got a, a role on TV, right? And people started knowing who she was. Yeah, he's like, "Oh no, I got." Oh, there's a whole plot where she makes more money than him, and that makes him feel inadequate too. Oh my God, there's a lot of that. I mean, like these oh, it, are the things yeah. that, like you know, in the nineties, I guess, and and, that and was... in like fiction, sure, yeah. And All some right. people, you does, know, does that mean that Uncle Ben had these concerns as well? No, because he's were... your male role model. Yeah, no, Uncle Ben was broke as fuck. No, but and I know, that made but him like... do a damn thing for a job. <laughs> Uncle Ben was like, please, mate, go get a job. Peter's his own <laughs> man. Like, he doesn't always do what I Uncle do ben my tells own him. thing. <laughs> anyway, so Doc Ock recruits the rest of them. Sure. You know, like, uh, Mysterio's got a thing. Uh, the police show up to, to arrest Mysterio. And Doc Ock's like, ooh, looks like the police are here. We better get out of here. Doc Ock called the police on Mysterio. Uh -huh. Mysterio's just a dumbass. Uh, you know. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, then we see Vulture. And we set up the next story arc, which is... Uh, Vulture is hired by Kingpin to kill Raymond Trask, a wealthy industrialist mm. who is running a casino in Atlantic City. 
And Kingpin wants Trask dead because Trask won't play ball with Kingpin. Okay. And notice that Kingpin's wearing a dark suit. I don't want you thinking Kingpin when you see Doc Ock. But he is right. doing like a Sinkovich style like, yeah, wall of a man. Right. Yeah. Yet another like fun cameo. Kingpin plays virtually no. He's in two pages and you never see him again. Right. He's just. He's like he's I'm there. helping to get the Sinister Six together too. <laughs> yeah. He has nothing to do with the Sinister Six. It's just like there's a lot of moving just a parts. Just day in the life of King Kingpin. Yeah. Here. Kingpin wants Raymond Trask dead, so he hires Vulture to kill him. Okay. One of Kingpin's Atlantic City associates, who of course is like a Dick Tracy villain of his own right. He doesn't know if hiring a 109-year-old man to kill someone is the safest business strategy. <laughs> so, Kingpin seems to think it's a guaranteed kill. Vulture <laughs> is a ruthless son of a bitch. That guy's yeah. like, I have my worries, I'm just saying. No, he doesn't voice them to Kingpin. Oh. He secretly hires another villain to kill Trask to ensure that's happening. Who is ah. that? Chance? Oh, I thought it was like someone important. Nope. Oh. Who? It's not. Uh, Chance? There, okay. There's a guy named Chance? There's a villain named Chance whose whole shtick... Now, when you see him, you must understand that his outfit in no way indicates his gimmick. Wait, okay. listen, but, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the thing. I'm going to point something out. Can you go back one more page from that? You're not going to point out the... We're getting there. Oh, oh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that Mary Jane shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, the butt shot? What, 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 I was going what to. What is she wearing? I, like, no. I, I don't know. What kind of pants are these? I, I, they're hot pants. Because <laughs> they're hot. <laughs> it looks like she's wearing a clam on her butt. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. It's got all these folds. What's it got all these folds look, for? The reality is no one would pose for Eric to be able to depict that scene. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Maybe he used, an, like, I was friends with a guy whose father was an artist, like a commercial artist, and he had a massive subscription to Playboy. <laughs> and he used that subscription to inform his art for women that he drew. Right. Among other things. Among other yeah, he had satisfactions other he required. Yeah. He enjoyed the articles. Naturally. Oh, I'm sure. I will say this, by the way. Availing myself of the collection. There's a whole box full of like vintage Playboys. Sure. Yeah. From like the 60s and the 70s. And I remember one from the 70s that had a huge article that was an interview with Stan Lee. Whoa. Of course and it would be. And they had custom art of Spider-Man like on a wall, but his mask is off and it's Stan's head on it. <laughs> and That's it was just, cool. it was a really insightful, kind of like interesting article. Well, little yeah. Sal's like, get this naked get center women out, out of here. Yeah. What are we this article about? <laughs> Stan Lee. I literally, I went in the attic in search of pornography <laughs> and I found the, ol and I'm the only one who found the Spider-Man article. <laughs> And it was like a big article too. It was like yeah. it was like many pages, and it gave me a big insight into so the character. Was your friend there too? And he's like looking at the ladies. Oh and yeah. It's like, Ooh, look oh at yeah. Oh, and you're yeah, like, no. hey, check this out. I'm like, look at this. And he's like, oh Sal. <laughs> oh Sal. Don't ever change. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, uh, maybe Larson had an image of a woman like bending I'm sure. over it's for very, other reasons. It's very yeah. cheesecake. It's, it's yes. deliberately cheesecake. You know, you're not. You know. You're not, you're not reading an Eric Larson comic for the article. Regardless yeah. of the pose, it was really the pants. I the pants, the pants figure are that insane. out. And I, I don't understand. Like, we could just move on, but it's like I've never seen anything quite like that. I, I, yeah. I, I, I hear you. I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's a, by the way, in that sequence, she's kissing Peter goodbye as Peter gets into a cab. And Peter has this sequence where he goes like, I can't believe I'm married to such an incredible person. Yeah. And you know what? Like... Every time I think my life sucks, I should remember that I'm married to a beautiful, intelligent, awesome actress. Yes. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. And it's like, wow, way to way to count way to your put blessings a, every now and then. Yeah, way to, way to put a fine point on that. <laughs> so, anyway, Raymond Trask, coincidentally to his uh, to his untimely impending demise, is showcasing something who gives a shit, and he's it's a big public gala, and Peter's assigned to photograph that event. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Lebensky, as it turns out, cashed in his life insurance policy. And he used it to place an underworld wager on the death of Raymond Trask. What? Nathan is what, plugged that he in. he would die at this event? Yes. Why would anyone... If, you, if you're making that bet, like, obviously you know something. Right. Why would anyone take that bet? The, the, 
because you live in a world where Captain America, Iron Man, and Spider Man all showed up at one time. Right. Oh, I see. Like, so it's like even if you think you're controlling it, a superhero might save up and save him. I mean, so, like that's certainly why I yes. think there's any odds. Right. By right. the way, the odds. Everyone knows what's going to happen. It's going to be a fight. Yeah, and Lebensky, <laughs> the whole reason why he's doing this is because he's. It's a lock. Trask is going to get executed at this right, event. Right, because he knows. He knows. Well, he heard, you know, like, yeah. Kingpin's got it, and, you know, he's got people on that. Oh and God. what's funny about that is that, like, the reason he's doing it is because the life insurance policy that Aunt May would receive, like, they're not going to get married before he dies, probably. Mm. And she would not receive his life insurance policy. Right. Even still, it's pennies compared to what he could win and set up for Aunt May after he's gone. Oh, so we're trying to set this up where it's just like, no, 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 he's not a total asshole. No, he's right. doing it. He's trying to give but her something. But it's also like, it, it, this is actually... But it's so stupid. It's so stupid, but I like it a lot, like now that I'm thinking about it, because Lebensky doesn't want to die. He's told he has terminal heart disease. Uh -huh. Like, he knows it's over. Right. He's also 904. Like, he is drawn like he died... He's friggin' Methuselah. Yeah, he it's died ridiculous. in ancient Egypt. That's how they both look. But he is... Well, that, that's why he's perfect for Aunt yeah. May. Exactly. Yeah. Those two are made for each other. Nathan knows he's going to die, but he doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. And so while he is telling himself, I'm setting up this thing for Aunt May, like, I'm setting this up for May because I love her, really what he's doing is he's falling back on his baser instincts and the things that make him comfortable because he doesn't want to die. And he doesn't want to think about being dead. So he's doing all this shit that he would do in his prime or as a living, you know, as, right. a, plan, as a person with plans. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, it's a very human thing to do. Yeah. He, it's, it's selfish and it's stupid. And it's like, why would you, like, why don't you just put it all on black at Vegas? Like, or Atlantic <laughs> City. Like, why do you need no, to bet on the life of a human it. being? It's fixed. Yeah. It's, it's a lock. Yeah. So... That's... I'm a monster. That's the setup. And of course, like, you know you're reading a Spider-Man book. Yeah. The Aww. tragedy is, Raymond Trask is going to die. Spider-Man's going to be involved. He's yep. not going to let this guy die. Yep. This guy's going to lose all He's that gonna money. He's going to lose all his money. What? Why is the astral form of Doctor Strange here for, like, three panels? To indicate, hey, there are superheroes in Manhattan. That's one. Two, so that Larson can draw Doctor Strange, which I think he does an excellent job of. Yeah, he looks and great. three, uh, it's just funny because it's another person who would solve the Sinister Six crisis, but won't because he's not really there and he's not going to show up anymore. Well, Doctor Strange is here right now because he says, he, he's, he's musing to himself, where he's like, such, such gatherings to celebrate a man and his material possessions, but nothing of value to the Sorcerer Supreme! <laughs> floats away. That's literally the entire <laughs> He's just like, thing here. All these people are gathering to celebrate someone because they own a lot of things. How lame. Now let me get back to my Greenwich Village mansion <laughs> full of really neat, one-of-a-kind things. Yep. Listen, don't give him a hard time. <laughs> Listen, I, I he wish he bombs he into this. shit all over these people <laughs> and talking about how as, much better as he well is. He <laughs> like a pigeon. As well he should. I love his drawing. I th I'm like, oh, now I want him to be in it. Like, why? Yeah. Did he why, why are you teasing that he's in it? He's and not. When you did the sequel, Revenge, and you did cram all the heroes in there, it was like a payoff See. to this because none of them show back up. Right. And none of them help him. Yeah. At the end of Revenge, all the heroes show up, but like, it's all the heroes like Sleepwalker and Solo. Like, you didn't put in Captain America, Iron Man, Doctor Strange. Well, no, they would have made it too floor. easy. It's just, yeah. you know, if they had Strange show up when. Um, Hobgoblin was recruited. Would have been interesting. It would have made more sense. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But Hobgoblin, no. Hobgoblin would have sensed him. It, 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 too many variables. And this is just a fun sequence where we get to see Doctor Strange. Plus, too many humans are talking. Gotta get a, gotta get a new oh, thing yeah, in there. Oh, yeah, something. Vulture's about to show up, man. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> Vulture page. shows up and he attacks Trask. And essentially what happens is Vulture attacks Trask. Peter runs off to be Spider-Man. And then... Chance shows up and he's like, uh -huh. and I'm here too! And here's Chance, because the Vulture's too easy for Spider-Man to just beat. Right. So Chance attacks Spider-Man. Spider-Man webs Chance's helmet. Chance's like, I can't see. The jig is up. And he just bails. Yeah. And he flies through a water tower or yes. something. It's yeah. awesome. Well, he can't see. So he's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta point myself up and over. I just hope that I land someplace That's where amazing. I can get away. So Chance off the table. So... Exit chance from the story. Uh, but Vulture is like, okay, I didn't get to kill Trask yet, but maybe I can get a hostage. So he goes after Aunt May. Oh. And I love it because like the crowd's like, ah! And Aunt May's pushing Nathan. He goes, Blaster Woman, stop pushing me away. I got to see if Trask is dead. <laughs> and so uh. Vulture grabs Aunt May. So now you got 
the you got the average aged grouping of about a thousand years. <laughs> Because Vulture is grabbing Aunt May and Nathan is attacking this, Vulture. This should have caused yeah. some sort of singularity, the right. three of them coming together. It's like, wait a minute, didn't I reject you from going to the sock hop dance in the in 19 Dickety 2? Some sort of like, you know, time dispersal event would, would occur. Captain America's like, my old sense is tingling. <laughs> so Nathan and Captain Batesman of the, <laughs> the USS. <laughs> Oh my god, this so, is amazing. Nathan attacks Vulture. Vulture's like, what's wrong with the old man? And he just flies up, and Nathan's still hanging on. So then Vulture, like, launches Nathan up into the sky. And Wait, Vulture's like, what's wrong with you? Clearly these two people are together. Well, I tried to take this hostage. Just let me do it. Right. And Why he's like, no. So <laughs> She's gonna die in, a, like, a week anyway. But, like, but he's gonna die, like, in two days. Yeah. So it's, it's, and the Vulture may or may not ever die? I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, Nathan falls, and Spider-Man catches him. Yeah. But his heart gives Somehow out. Somehow doesn't snap his neck. No, well, Spider-Man's got it. Wait, Nathan's heart since, gives out? Yeah, Nathan's heart gives out. Does yeah, he die? He, had the heart he dies. Right there and then? Right yeah, there and then. He dies no, in No, he dies Aunt in Ant-Man's arms. arms. And, the, like, the, the crowd of gawkers who were all there for Trask, like, form, like, a shame circle around these two old people. Yeah. He's just like, May, I bet all of my money on the life of an innocent man. I've left you with nothing. And she's like, no, you silly thing. You, you've you given me everything. And then he dies, and she's like, thanks. So then we have this, the funeral for Nathan. And how does she afford to have I, that? I had to lie and pretend it was okay that you yeah, <laughs> lost all your you money that. so that you would die. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they miserable. fucking pay for that. I assume Mary Jane's first paycheck from Secret Hospital goes to pay for this thing. Oh my but God. In any, Because there's no life insurance. Yeah. Right. So, so, so who paid for this? And I love it because all the, the people who are there are like, oh, gee, May, it's, it's just such a tragedy. And one guy's like, why is there why, what a bunch of hypocrites? Nathan sucked. Huh. And I'm like, yes, like, it's me. Thank you. Point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and, and Mary Jane and Peter are like, come on, like, May, we'll take you home. And she goes, no, I have to get used to being alone at some point. Oh. And then just leaves. Jeez. So then the Center no, Six are finally formed! It's okay. It's no, no, I have to get used to dying alone in my house all by myself. <laughs> so wow. I, okay, so I guess we will be going with you then. Jesus no, Christ. No, don't mind my tears. No, no, <laughs> I'm no, fine. Don't let me be a oh burden. Oh my god. It'll take me okay. three hours to walk to the end of well, the I, cemetery. I've gotta yeah. do it on my own. Oh, I fell. <sighs> no, I'm sure I'll be okay though. You keep going. Just keep going. You young people have things to do, I'm sure. Sex to be had and whatnot. <laughs> oh my god, Aunt May. <laughs> I'm Spider-Man. Pick up. <laughs> <laughs> so Fortunately, even though it's a funeral, Mary Jane still looks fantastic. Yes. <laughs> She's got a brand to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hot. The yes. Sinister Six gets formed and they're like, alright, here we are. And That's what, finally happening. What's the plan? And Doc Ock's like, book. here's the plan. I have a plan. Here's the plan. It's a pyramid scheme. You yeah. guys now go out and get six other <laughs> villains. You're my downline. Or upline. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I don't know the term. Magnetic ley line? <laughs> yeah. You're my ley line. Yeah. And, and we're going to sell high quality products to each other. You just have to buy a certain amount from me every month. <laughs> and if you don't, I'll kill anyone you care about. Yeah. But then you sell it to other people, and so yeah, it's fine. You thing. still make money, yeah. You see that car I just drove here in? You yourself could own that car <laughs> in about a hundred years. You just got to work hard like me. The harder you work, the better the more you do. You make. Yep. Yeah. It's just like any job. Right. <laughs> a job that you pay to go to. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doc Ock's plan, his scheme is: well, Empire State University is launching a rocket into space to like test for. Nonsense. <laughs> For shit that's not real. I'm gonna strap a poison release machine. It will poison the Earth unless Earth's rulers let us rule it for them. Okay, he really Ooh. seems to have this all in hand. Or tentacle. Uh, why does he need them? Because he yeah. needs lackeys. He only has four extra arms. I he can't needs... rule the entire world by myself. Right. Well, he's like, each of you will get like a region or something. Mm. I'll split it up. Yeah, like an old man Logan. What? Hey, Mysterio's here. Mm. Oh. No. Uh, what does he need Sandman for? Sandman doesn't want to rule the world, I assume. He basically says, like, I don't want that. And what, what, we, we're now, we're, you threaten to kill, like, the people I work with. 
now you're going to threaten to kill the planet? Yeah, like, you like, sucks. You literally have Shocker in this book, and you're like, no, nah, Sam Man. No, nope, Sam Man. Shocker sucks too much. I want the, I want the unwilling much. participant. Yep. Well, who, he's like, who will betray me as soon as he possibly just, can. That's yes. just Doc Oz. He just needs that. Yep. He's, that's how he gets off. It, he well, just, it gives him an extra project. It's yeah. like, it's, they're well, too also, easily like, doomed. You're the only one of the Sinister Six who's actually a powerful character. Uh, right. <laughs> Electro Hobgoblin? could technically... Yeah, one's a demon, the other one can master electricity itself. Uh, I'd still and rather have someone who could like, change his size and is like <laughs> functionally immortal. True. Yeah. But so, he gets everywhere. He's like, he does get everywhere. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Sandman. <laughs> So he's like, okay, so everybody gets, everybody has a crucial role to play. But they all get envelopes. And they all get envelopes with their part of the plan. Right. Oh, I got... I like got, it's a Star Wars script. You, here's your part, here's your part, here's your part. Just I was going to say it's like, a, it's like a class project. I yeah. got like hobgoblins. Yeah. I'm not hobgoblin. <laughs> no, all right, just switch them. Just, you don't need to tell me every time you need to do something, okay? Just, no, just but use you're in your charge. brains. Okay, yeah, but like I hired you because I Where's expected Where's the bathroom? You... What? Can what? I go to the bathroom? This looks like a warehouse. Is there a bathroom in here? Yeah, I see a bathroom. boxes. You just gotta and stuff. wait. All right, we're... No, I want to go now. But we're in the middle of the plan right now. <laughs> Can we get the stuff in these boxes? Is this like your stuff? In these have boxes this? all over the place? What's Fine. Is there like merchandise have... here? Oh man. It's just whatever was left over who's, in the warehouse. Whose place is this anyway? Is this yours? No, we broke in. <laughs> Where did you get these envelopes? All right, these I brought from home. <laughs> so Peter and Mary Jane have like a have like a terse discussion. Oh. About you know, Aunt May? More or less, you know, because Pete's, Pete's worried about her and, and Mary Jane is like, well, what, like, what do you want to eat? We need to eat and like kind of like get our minds off That's of this. That's what like, you do after a funeral. Yeah, so yeah. Like, what do you want to eat? Uh, and, and she names three things and he just says fine to all of them and she goes how about a dead rat and he says fine and she goes see you weren't paying attention and he's like no I don't care I don't care about those things he's just so overwhelmed with like sorrow right. for his aunt and but he's yeah. like no nah. and so he like leaves but her there you're okay like literally that's a thing like after a funeral everybody yeah. goes to eat because yeah. you need that yeah. time there's to, no like, money I don't want to eat there's no money. No one's going anywhere. No, Aunt May went home immediately after the put well, no, in the th ground. She's going to go with him because clearly he needs it. Yeah. He needs to just sit there and like eat something. And well, then she needs oh, to right. just, if she's just decide for him. Instead of like forcing him to decide, just take him somewhere. Well, the point, the reason why we <laughs> did that is so that day. Peter would snap right. at her outside so that her stalker would say, oh, is her husband being abusive? Oh. And then... Mary Jane. Write it down. I'm yeah. gonna write. I don't want to forget this. Yeah. Mm. Abusive. I think Question I remember mark? that. So then Mary Jane <laughs> goes up the stairs, and while she's going up the stairs, she's like, you know. I completely forgot about this plot. I know, right? What's well, very important. It's all gonna coalesce. Yep. Oh yeah. Beautifully. I'm sure. It's not gonna feel like a hard stop, and then another start again after that. Okay. So, uh, you know, Mary. I, I like. There's a little interaction here. Uh, Mary Jane's like going up the stairs, and she's thinking to herself like. You know, he yelled at me for no good reason, but he's feeling bad. And you know what? Like, I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna forget about it, not give him a hard time about it. I'm just gonna let him be upset. And when she opens oh, the wow. door, he's standing there, and he goes, "That was me. I'm sorry." And she's like, "Well, I guess I could forgive you." <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they've said, "Damn it, Mary oh, yeah. Jane." Well, of course they do. Naturally, <laughs> they always do. But uh, she, no, he. That she, also can happen. Actually, they, they indicate mm -hmm. they're gonna have sex, and he's like, "No, I gotta go." And she's like, oh. "Okay." Well, she, and then she goes, "I'll keep the dead rat warm." And he goes, "What?" <laughs> Boy, you really weren't paying attention. Yeah, that's, no, it was, it was, it was a, a joke, little, like, and I guess it's a euphemism. I don't know. Yeah. Right. No, it's not a euphemism. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so I Hobgoblin. Hope it's not. So, why so, is Peter drawing like a little boy here? Because he's sorrowful. He has oh. big, dull eyes. His, his eyebrows are slanted, so you know he feels bad. I see. Mysterio <laughs> sidled with Hobgoblin. They all get split off to do other things. Uh -huh. There's a there's this there's this rare element called Burundite, and Burundite hails from an East African country called Burun. Oh, it's fake. Okay, it's fake. <laughs> It's a fake element like vibranium or right. vita rays. Oh, it's fake. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just like Mysterio's powers. <laughs> which I can imagine Hobgoblin's like, oh, cool, I got the other magic guy. Yeah, he's like, ha ha, doves. He's like, what? You don't make these pumpkin bombs. I just have like a portal that leads into a hellish nightmare realm where yeah, pumpkin bombs hell? exist. Wait a minute. Pumpkin you? bombs come from a nightmare realm? Well, I'm just saying, like, he doesn't where, build them. Where the hell does he get these? Because, like, here's the thing. I don't know. Norman Osborne built them. Norman builds the pumpkin bombs. Mackendale slash Roderick stole them and incorporated them into their 
deal. Yeah. But this is a demon man. <laughs> That portal doesn't go to hell. It goes to a farm somewhere in like Vermont, and like that. There's just this feverishly working guy who's like, "Oh no, he wants more pumpkin balls." No, I was thinking it was a farmer with a field who's just like, "I'm ruined." <laughs> the steroid hobgoblins steal the Burundite. Cool. Oh no. From who? Empire State University, of course. Oh. Is that the guy he was working with? No, it's a different guy. It's another old guy. Another old guy. There's a lot of old people in this book. People. Well, the old guy is hypnotized by Mysterio. Mm. And then it's great because he's he's hypnotized. Mysterio's like, behold, demon, watch as I control the will of this man. And uh, I can imagine Hobgoblin being like, well, I'll just eat his soul and then just take it away. But he doesn't do that. He's, he lets Mysterio have this. He's like, oh, okay, cool. So the guy's Ooh. like, oh, you, my will is yours. And then the other guy goes, give me that. And then he just throws it in the safe. He goes, it's in the safe. You can't have it. Like, employee of the month, ladies and gentlemen. And then Hobgoblin murders him, I'm sure. <laughs> he blows up the safe and then Spider-Man shows up and kicks Hobgoblin in the face. Oh. That's a lot of glass. He broke a window to yeah, get there. that's freaking awesome. That's Look like that. a lot of glass. Yeah. yeah. It's like a chore that Larson gave himself. <laughs> yep. And then he breaks a window. Full page. Ah, oh, shit. Why did I do this? Hobgoblin, what are you there for? You're just letting this happen? <laughs> yeah. You, you should have just sent Mysterio. He's but like, we needed... I'm, I'm sorry. I was a million miles away. What? I'm it's just sorry. proof that we didn't need Hobgoblin in the book. But I yeah. want six of them and Hobgoblin sells. And so he has chuck. to blow up the safe. Yeah. Mysterio would never have been able to get into That's that That's true. Thing. Yeah, he's like, I made it look like the safe exploded. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but did it? No, it's still in there. Does it's locked up tight. shoot lasers out of his fingers? Yeah. What? They're That's hell, a power he has? They're hell lasers. It's hell fire, I think. It's just like... <laughs> what does he need pumpkin bombs for? It's he just, has bombs that shoot out of his hand. It's branding! It, yeah. It's, these are three hobgoblins removed from Green Goblin. <laughs> I'm infringing on Batman. They get away, they take no. the Burundite, and the Has Spider-Man started to put together... He's oh, like, yeah, he knows. They're like, oh, shit. He's like, because he saw Doc, Doc Ock. Oh, yeah, he like, puts it together okay, in his mind. Cool. He's, he's like, like, oh, no, I saw Doc Ock and Electro, and now Mysterio and Hobgoblin team up. If they all team up, then that's like the... I, I should probably call someone. He doesn't. But he calls them at the end. He calls he calls heroes at the end of the story. But if you were getting bored of that Spider-Man action, how about another action sequence where Flash and Black Cat or Felicia Hardy are at like a, a basketball court and some Oh, she's got weird pants too. They don't have What the folds. hell? Those are denim, you know, short shorts that like They look like, you know, sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah, they got like they got like uh, rings or fins yeah. or something. Yeah, it's so weird. I know. Anyway, the, the the indication here is that like they're gonna rob them. So Flash goes, well, we don't want any trouble, and he gives them her purse. And she's thinking, what a wimp! If I were a black cat, I'd kick the crap out of them. But I can't let Flash Thompson know who I am. And then one of them's like, yeah, now we're gonna rape her. And Flash is like, okay. And then he just beats the shit out of all of them. Huh. And Felicia's like, wow, no one's ever like no regular person has ever stood up for me before. Like maybe this guy's cool. Yeah, she was just musing about how her plan was to break his heart <laughs> to get back at Spider-Man. <laughs> yep, I'll break and then his she sees, heart. She's like, oh, he's actually a really good guy. Yeah. Oh, now I feel bad. Yeah. Oh, that's well, not and, fun. Like maybe maybe I can like actually enjoy the sex instead of just pretending to. <laughs> like it's just it's really weird their relationship. That is Gross. really weird. Yeah. Yep. Nova flies by and he's like. Oh, I could use help? Hey! And Nova's gone. He's like, okay, well, that's that. So that's just the theme of this book is like, heroes just pass through and don't help Spider-Man yes. at nice. all. They're just there. Yep. Just to remind you that they exist. Yes. Is there like a Nova book that's happening right now they're trying to promote? Nova, I think, is on the New Warriors at this point. Ah, uh, okay. Then we, uh, we see Jonathan Caesar is back. And uh, he's back in his penthouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and he is sinisterly like uh, uh, enjoying oh a my God. scale model replica. Look at these pictures of Mary Jane. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He he's literally super villainously scheming over a scale model replica of a villa that really exists on a private island that Jonathan Caesar owns. And what's he's like? Okay, so my plan was to kidnap Mary Jane and keep her, but. We, I did that in New York, where there are too many variables. So I'm going to kidnap her and take her to my island where she can't leave. And if she does try to leave, you know, I'm in open ocean, you know, because of the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> what does he need a scale model of it for? I just remember what it looks like. Yeah, That's you know, amazing. obviously this man has a memory problem. He wrote down that her husband might be abusive. Right. He's like, hang right. on, let me get my notebook. Mm. What did Certainly I he has a memory problem because like, I need to remember that Mary Jane gives me a boner, so here's my wall of pictures of her looking provocative, and I own a villa. Like, oh man, this place is awesome. It's like Memento. He's like, yeah. he's just keep constantly oh, reminding himself. Do I, do I own that? I, I wish this were real, and then he like looks it up, like how can I build vi like villa 
And it's like, you, that villa's already there? Ooh! <laughs> I'll contact the realtor, see like who owns that. That's you, Mr. Caesar. Ooh! That's amazing. You call every day, man. <laughs> this so, is bizarre. Uh, Electro is enacting part of his plan. Uh, is he by himself? Yeah, yeah, it looks like he's by himself. Oh, I guess he would have to team up with Doc Ock, and Doc Ock's That's not gonna do happen. That. No, no. <laughs> So Spider-Man tries to beat Electro. We get a full page image of Spider-Man fighting Electro, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, but Electro calls in for backup and like a big, cool science fiction-esque mm. aircraft it's arrives. Like the sinister sick Blackbird. Yeah, it picks him up and they and it it's leaves. Sweet. And Spider-Man has nothing to go on except for a scrap of paper from the plan, mm. which has the name of the company that was making the launch happen oh. on it. It also says, Spider-Man, you smell. Right. You know, they and, knew. And also Spider-Man sucks and he's not nearly as cool as Iron Man. Which completely burns his his butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Have they, are they going to launch this thing yet? What are they yeah, doing? Yeah, we're, we're at the launch oh, right now. Cool. Oh, and, and Doc Ock Doc muses Ock. to himself about how he's going to screw everyone over. Are, yeah. there, are there six chapters in this? Yeah. Six issues for six oh. characters. Oh. Cool. So we're at the launch. Yeah. Spider-Man's there. Doc Ock is watching it from now. Okay. They have a giant, awesome spacecraft or, yeah. or, or aircraft. Yes. Yeah. They also have a submarine lair. Cool. What? What happened to the warehouse? They 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 that was they upgraded. Yep. Oh. They were just there for like that one meeting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He just finished. He was still building the submarine. Oh. I think that was yet. like materials they stole from the military base. Oh, to make that's their, like, why they. Underground sub. Yeah, because this thing was at the military base. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so they're like in the Long Island Sound, just kind of keeping an eye on the launch and getting ready to deal with it. So Spider Man's yeah. like, okay, well, it's night. They're not going to launch yet, so I can go home. Like, I've been, been watching it. No, no activity. I'm done. So he, he goes home. That's it's probably uh, fine now. Well, he's like, I'll be back, but, I, right. but I'm, I'm going to go home uh, for a little uh, while. Look, uh, they won't do anything. No. What were you right. watching it for before the what? I guess he's going like every day. Oh. Or at least he's gonna start going every day, but he doesn't right. have to wait that long. Okay. So he goes home and he meets up with Aunt May, you know, as Peter Parker. Yeah. You know, he's like, "Hey, Aunt May, how you doing?" He even makes oh. a comment to himself about how he's like, "I hope she's over her mourning." And I'm like, "He died yesterday." <laughs> well, I hope she's over Did, it. Was Come it on. yesterday or was it like a week? Like how much time has passed? Uh, like, I assume a couple of days. Okay. Max. Peter's like, he's no Uncle Ben. All right, right, no, you mourn him forever. Yes, yeah. He was a jerk. Screw this guy. Yeah. But uh, he talks to Aunt May. And, yeah. uh, Aunt May and he, he also wears the most ludicrous shirt. Yeah, he, he wears a could. wild and crazy guy shirt. He's just, he just wants to put a smile on her face, Ethan. That's yeah, so he's dressed like a clown. Look. Yeah. Do, 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 do. They have a good conversation, by the way, uh, where Aunt May feels guilty. Like, she feels really bad. She's taking it particularly badly because she hoped he would die when he was suffering. Like, before that. Oh. Like, she was kind of hoping for his passing. I see. She's and like, I caused it. Yes. Okay. Like, this is where Peter gets his unfounded guilt from. I and see. Uh, so he's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what if you were dying? Wouldn't I be bad for for wishing for your suffering to end? She goes, no. You'd, you'd want it out of love. Oh, you're a good boy, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm over it. Yeah. So Peter's walking home, and then a piece of, like, the roof falls and he, wow. his spider sense warns him in time, but it, he, he skillfully avoids right. his head being I mean, caved in. That, thing can, that can actually happen in New York. Yeah, but he that goes up there. That did happen to someone. And, yeah, but he scales up the wall, and he goes up there, and he sees that it was chiseled away. Oh. Someone's trying to it kill was, him. What's his, it was the guy. It was, it was the, the guy. guy who likes, likes, what's his face? Yeah, uh, it's the guy who likes Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah exactly. What? Spoilers. What? <laughs> who else would it be? I don't know. We haven't gotten there right? yet, man. Abusive? Here's, right? <laughs> Here's the crunching scene. Here's the crunch scene where Mary Jane is just drawn naked, but then they color in a shirt over her What moves. is that top? Is Reed Richards calling right now? He's on TV. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was nah. calling in. He's like, oh, Mary Jane. Oh. <laughs> oh. No, uh. Reed Richards is on TV. It's like, hey, Fantastic Four 2. Uh, Reed is endorsing the like Empire State University plan right. for ley lines. I'm just imagining that Reed figured out when Mary Jane works out, and so he always calls it. His is Spider-Man here? No, Reed, again. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll wait. Go ahead. Yeah, Peter wanted me to is... give you these special goggles. <laughs> oh, 
my God. Look at this. I like these things it's, where it's like, it, you know, her hair's already ridiculous. Big. Let's use it to yeah. like fill the her scene. Her hair is, is of myth and legend. Yeah. Like Medusa's it's like, like yeah. step off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Peter gum, comes home and she's like, whoa, you came into the, the skylight wearing your regular clothes. What's up? And he explains like, I, want, I was I was looking for the guy who tried to kill me. Right. And then they, they muse about Jonathan Caesar and about how like, oh, like Jonathan Caesar must be back. We'll call right. Officer Goldman because like, you know, you were you were almost assassinated, right. and Peter's like, yeah. Well, uh, and she's like, no. You go deal with the the Sinister Six, and I will deal with the with the Jonathan Caesar thing. And Has anyone like, called them the Sinister Six yet? Peter will later, okay. and uh, Doc Ock constantly refers to them as. Oh, uh, okay. Six. You mean she's not like Peter? You go deal with the the Caesar thing. I'll take care of the Sinister yeah, Six. Yeah, we'll no, they don't we'll switch villains. I'll just time. I'm gonna do crunches at them. We'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, we gotta go. <laughs> It's all spandex we're wearing. <laughs> so uh, Peter leaves, and Mary Jane says she's going back to the set, but she's not. And we have this like fun little sequence where like she goes into what looks like a jewelry store, and they're like, "Oh, Madame, what can we introduce you to?" And she's like, "Oh, are you, can you get me something in a thirty-eight special? It's a like a New York highfalutin gun shop." <laughs> She's going to get a gun to protect herself from right. Caesar. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, at the hospital for Mary Jane's director, Jonathan Caesar shows up and he's like, Ha ha! I need you to hand write a note to Mary Jane telling her to meet you at the set. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, you'll do it or I'll kill you. And he... He does this thing, and I don't think what it's a real happening? thing at all. Caesar brings flowers, I guess under the pretense of like being a, a well-wisher. Yeah. He then takes out the syringe and he, and he extracts... Something liquid from the flowers and yeah. then threatens to inject his IV with the properties. Oh. And I... because Caesar has influence, when the director tries to call for help, he's like, oh, you'll find that they're quite unavailable. <laughs> I assume, because I, I I thought he was injecting the flowers with something that he was right. going to give to her. Nope. Yeah, no. And he's... that what he was threatening to inject him with was an air bubble. Yeah, no, he's no, he's. That's obviously not what it is, but that's just right. from that's this so from my vantage point. That's so insane because all he had to do was bring the syringe pre-filled. Yes. Why did he need to bring flowers that were hiding a liquid toxin? I and guess then... because maybe those are the flowers he's going to give Mary Jane. And no, then... he wants. Well, no, because that this would kill him. But he he just yeah, wants no, to he, get her. The flowers they're just gone. He's literally extracting a red liquid from the flowers and then draining the syringe into this guy's IV. Yeah. So the guy writes the note, and then he's like, well, I can't have you talking, and then he kills him anyway. Yeah. He threatens him. He says, I'm going to inject this thing in if you don't write the note, and then he just does it anyway. So this is yeah. a cautionary tale. Don't be a jerk to people, because you never know when their crazy stalker is going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. So Even just... momentarily, he tries to undo his mistake, like, literally the second Mary Jane leaves Yeah, it's like, listen, I'm sorry. I was out of line. Oh, yeah. f- <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Oh, just don't do it. I can't believe I survived that. Yeah. Well, I'm back. Well, I'm what? not done with you yet. So Pete's there as Peter Parker with his like with his camera ready to like watch the launch. I'm gonna and watch he... the launch from here. I bet nothing will happen. Every time I've been assigned to something, oh, I end up hell? having to be Spider Man. Then the Sinister Six attack. Just Boom, be Spider Man, like up. hide behind the gantry or whatever. Like so, then everyone shows up. Yeah, of course they do. How and... is he gonna take photos from here? He doesn't have a specialty lens. Well, no. maybe he had a bag, but in any case, he <laughs> he he he, he changes into Spider Man and he engages the Sinister Six. Yeah, so we have a big fight at the launch club. Yes, and then the, the fight is fun and legendary, you know, but like doesn't matter. And they all fight him at once, so he's like, is, ho- this, is this Hobgoblin? No, that's, no, that's the mysterious Hysteria. illusion oh, right. of a cool demon. That's cool. Or dragon. All right, this is a cool demon. Hobgoblin's oh, like, a- that is not what we look like. That is insulting. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> So Spider-Man is getting his ass trounced by the Sinister Six, and then Sandman's like, "That's enough." Yeah. Uh, now it's time for my dramatic turn. Yeah. And then Doc Ock goes, "Yeah, I kind of figured this is gonna happen," and he shoots Sandman with a special ray gun that cha- that transforms Sandman's sand into glass. Oh. And he's frozen in place as like a glass sculpture. Huh. And then he tells his minions. Well, I mean, I mean business partners to break Sandman. Oh, uh, so now I, Spider-Man's got to protect, protect they Sandman. They don't even have to do that because Spider-Man could just burst through him like he did a window and then... Yeah, and then if... Sandman will be a thousand pieces. It's fine. Of course, if you've seen our Revenge of the Sinister Six episode, not only does Doc Ock also change Sandman to glass, but he then shatters Sandman. Yeah. And then at the end, Sandman shows up at the 11th hour as Glassman 
and just cuts the shit out of Doc Ock with his like awesome new powers, which I was like, are we now making Sandman into Glassman? No, they just use the Gla- thing to Glass change Glassman seems legit more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fragile. Well, true, but he's already shattered. Yeah. yeah. If you could just keep reforming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, everyone kind of like kiboshes the launch, and then Doc Ock's like, launch the rocket. Like I put the I put the poison on there to launch the rocket. And they're like, no. So he, like, no, I'm not so, gonna do that. So he grabs one person with his arms. He snaps the neck of that oh. person, and then he's like, anybody else? And then the lady's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Boop. So then the, the 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 rocket gets launched. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier in the story when Doc Ock is like concocting his his evil. Uh, poison that uh-huh. he's going to threaten humanity with. Sure. Uh, Hobgoblin sneaks a vial of the poison. That's for later. Yeah. Oh. He puts it into his purse. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a purse. It's European. European. So, uh, so Spider-Man is left on the launch pad. Yeah. And he's like, I failed. And then Hobgoblin says, I would worry more about the poison down here and uses the poison he stole from Doc oh. Ock and sprays Spider-Man with it. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. In chapter six, the Sinister Six is now, Spider-Man has been choking on this poison that should have killed him in 15 seconds for a minute or two. Well, he's, he's, been sti- he's been sitting there long enough for the entire team to like, <laughs> no, just look at him well, like. Well, not the entire team. Well, no, they, Doc Ock is not there. Well, yeah. I mean, they couldn't really push Sandman over. <laughs> right, oh, right, that's true. Yeah. But they're all like, what the hell? Why is he dead? And then Doc Ock goes, I didn't count on Hobgoblin stealing my poison. I guess I'll have to reveal my nefarious scheme a little ahead of time. So here's the deal. You did help me do this thing. It's not really a poison. In fact, now it's being launched all over the earth. Uh, but it is is—it is not a poison. It is, in fact, a diabolical cure. What? You see... <laughs> Doc Ock has invented a gaseous infection that will circulate around the globe. Uh-huh. It will infect every man, woman, and child on earth. And it will give them an allergic reaction to cocaine. What? He has cured cocaine addiction. If you try to use cocaine and if you if you use it, you will go into convulsions. Oh. So, if you want to keep doing cocaine, you have to take the antidote to the to this infection I've sent across oh. the earth, which is made of barundite. And interesting. And most pe- and who uses cocaine? The wealthy and powerful. Right. And if they want to keep using it. cocaine, then I'll sell them. I'm, it's like so now they have to buy the cocaine, and they have to buy the, the cure, thing that like, lets them take why the didn't cocaine. Doc Ock just try and control cocaine. <laughs> like. No, then I gotta deal with cartels and crap. Right. I get to start with from the ground up with yes. Grundite. Yep. Yeah, I'm selling this, and I'm I have the only supply of it. Uh, all the cartels are gonna come after you, man, nah. so that they can sell the Brundite along with the cocaine. Nah, I'm not just gonna arms. sit back and let you control the thing that <laughs> allows their customers to buy their stuff. Right. Nah. <sighs> Here's the thing about a lot of things. In this Wouldn't planet. a lot of people be like, "This is good." Yes. Yes. That's the uh, that's what Spider Man so is one of those people. But uh, so the the, the Sinister Six is like, what the crap? How is this better than the actual like fake plan he told them? Right. Well, because Doc Ock was like, I don't have any interest in ruling a world. Yeah, what does of that even mean? People? Rule the world. And, and what if they don't play ball? Then I just gotta kill right. everybody. Right. He's like, Why then I got a planet that? of dead people. That sucks. Yeah. And he's like, oh, also I'm gonna be doing it alone. Like he's like, it, it's a, it, it, like he really screws up because he's like, and I plan on on ruling this this empire by myself. You're all a bunch of rubes. And it's like so, you could just use them continuously. Yeah. So well, now all the Sinister Six have to do to defeat Spider Man is give him cocaine. Right. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone have any cocaine on them? Unfortunately not. Oh. So then uh, the. How about you, Hobgoblin? Check your purse. So literally the six bail. Like, or the five bail. They just leave. Like, well, like the, the four. Yeah, the four. That's <laughs> right. So the four bail, and Spider-Man's like, okay, Doc, it's just you and me. And then Doc Ock's like, oh no, because the gun I used on Sandman, it can reverse the the effects. And then he just throws it into the Long Island Sound. And Spider-Man's like, crap! So as it's falling, he fires a spider tracer on the gun and one on Doc Ock. And he's like, okay, so I chase Doc Ock and, lo- or, and, and lose the gun, or do I catch the gun and, and potentially lose Doc Ock. Right. Sandman went to my aid. Nah. So he throws himself in the drink. He grabs the gun. The, he saves Sandman. Why didn't he use his webs? Uh, I guess they, they wouldn't go far enough. Yeah. 
So he didn't have time. Far far enough as compared to like being able to web swing through the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So Spider Man, <laughs> uh, he saves Sandman, and then he's like, "Okay, I gotta make a phone call." So he goes home and uh, like to take a break and make and, and make a couple of calls. Yeah, and, and make out with his wife. Yeah. So he's who's dressed in something else. She's ridiculous. Like, she's like, I could have worn this to the th- the funeral, but I didn't. No. Yes. Because I'm a classy lady. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he gets a call from Doc Swan. He's like, you got to get out down here right now. And he's like, okay. So he comes down there. And uh, Mary Jane's like, well, I just I just got a call. Like, I, I got a telegram from my director. I got to oh, go down to the, the thing. So she goes to the set and Spider-Man goes to Empire State. And when he gets to Empire State, he finds out that, like, in the, like, analysis of the poison that they found on the scene before it was launched... Unfortunately, while we could just let it permeate our atmosphere, it is also burning a hole in the ozone layer. Oh, jeez. Oh, the Doc Ock was so focused on the cocaine part, he didn't notice that it also had, like, ozone-depleting properties. Okay. So, unfortunately, if we let it stay there, we're all dead. Right. So, his plan wasn't to kill the world, but he's going to anyway. Yes. And he doesn't even By know By accident. It. Yes. And he's not even going to get anything for it. No. Yep. So, Mary Jane goes to Man, the set. He, he is a master planner. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even when he doesn't know he's making a plan, he's got a plan. So, Jonathan Cease is like, Naha! I've got you. you got to come with me to my uh-huh, private island. I bet island. you didn't know it was me. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, dude, please. So, uh, yeah. She's like, I'm not going with you. And he's like, well, then I'll stab you to death with my knife. <laughs> and then, Officer Goldman shows up. And he's oh. like, ha-ha, I'm here at your service, Mary Jane. And she's like, what are you doing here? Huh. And he's like, I'll save you. And then he just blows Jonathan Caesar away. Oh, my God. Just pumps him full of lead. And Jonathan Caesar is dead. Okay, wait. What's up with this guy? This guy is Mary Jane's number one fan. He works in, like, a cubicle at the police department. Not as a policeman, but as, like, you know, oh my God. some grunt. There's and multiple people obsessed with Mary Jane. And all he, it's like something about Mary. And all <laughs> he wants to do is know, is is get to know and love Mary Jane because he is a huge Secret Hospital fan. He watches the show every day in his cubicle at work. <laughs> and so he was the guy who was writing things down. He's the guy who who dropped oh. the light fixture on the director for being so mean to her. And he's the guy who chiseled away the block. The Jonathan Caesar thing was an accident. He he knew he could pin things on Jonathan Caesar, who incidentally also wanted to collect and own Mary Jane. But right. now that Caesar's out of the way, it's Goldman's time to shine. Oh my God, this is amazing! And this is a soap opera. Yes, about a soap opera. Mm-hmm. So Mary Jane is like, "Are you for real? This is ridiculous." <laughs> and he's like, "Well, you'll have like you know, so yeah, you and I are you you know, you, you owe me big time." And she's like, "Well." I'm not, no, you, you killed that man in cold blood. I'm not going to go with you or, or do anything for you. And he goes, well, then I guess I'll always have reruns. And he threatens to kill her. Uh, and so she's, she's like, right back where she started. Yes. The scene. Yes. Well, luckily she's got that gun. Yes. And she says, stay back. I got a gun. He goes, no, you don't. Because I was across the street and there's a waiting period on those guns. Oh, so yeah. you did not get one. Damn it. And I she's was like, wondering about that. Yeah. And she's like, damn it. Well, if you kill me, then you'll never know all the things they were going to do with my character in Secret Hospital. Don't you want to know? <laughs> and he I says, like that, that's what she uses. Yeah, and he goes, You'll well, never of know. course I do. And she, what? Goes, oh. my character. she goes, well, come closer. I don't want anyone else to hear. And then she pulls out hairspray and sprays him in the face and nice. then clocks him in the head with her purse, knocking him unconscious. And she's like, oh my God. Because the average weight of a woman's purse is anywhere enough between to... 1 and 25 pounds there you in, go. in any given day. Right. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. So he's yep. down. So Spider-Man, Meanwhile, uh, he, he, Spider-Man pretends to call the Avengers to deal with the Doc Ock problem. Uh-huh. And instead he calls like Sandman, who tells Spider-Man where the lair is. Yeah. So Spider-Man gets a chopper to fly him over the lair. And when he gets a hit on his spider tracer, he goes down there. Okay. And then he engages Doc Ock, and Doc Ock's like, what are you doing? And Spider-Man's like, I'm just here for the burn diet. I need it to cure the problem because you didn't know you're killing the ozone layer. And Doc Ock goes, of course you would say that. Yeah. You're just making shit up now. So then they fight. the ozone layer. Yeah, like, please. that's a thing. What a 90s problem to have. <laughs> what? Now, not, nothing like my cocaine problem. 
The ocean's not even real, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a scientist. Yeah. yeah. Global warming is <laughs> a just myth a thing Spider-Man. that people made up to scare you. I'm like, are you a scientist anymore? What, 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 what are, are you? you? Right. And I love it because Spider Man's like, I just need to get to the Burundite and leave. Right. I don't even need to fight him. Right. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll just I'll just throw myself between the chinks in his arms. Right. And then like we we display the versatility of those arms. Yeah, just, uh, just how fucking long they are. And he's like, Oh, what a good idea this was. It's <laughs> just tied up completely in <laughs> I arms. Love that like, I'll just I'll just jump in with you. Oh. Oh. Damn. And he goes, wait a minute. He's using all of his arms mm-hmm. to wrap me up, which means nothing is tethering him to the ground. And so he webs a wall and he just pulls and he's like, yeah! <laughs> and his arms nice. flail out and they hit like a convenient canister of explosion. You know, like something that explodes, like a like a. No, I, it's a canister of explosion. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an explosion a, tank. It's just a tank that's full that, of explosions. That's what that yeah. warehouse made. Yeah, it made explosions. Yeah, <laughs> it drummed up explosions and then sent them off to, <laughs> to different <laughs> movie studios and, and video games. And video games. Yeah, just barrels of fire. And uh, so Doc Ock's thing hits that, and now the 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 lair is is engulfed in flames. And Spider Man just desperately tries to go after the Burundite, and Doc right. Ock starts to leave, and he goes, "What are you doing?" Like, where were you going? And Doc Ock's like, your desperation to get that Burundite lends credence to your tale. So, right. till we meet again. And then he just leaves. And Spider-Man gets the Burundite. And he goes to Empire State. And then he makes another phone call. This time, for real, to the Avengers. <laughs> and Because they're like, okay, we've synthesized a cure for Doc Ock's stupid cocaine plan. But we don't have another rocket. And Spider-Man's like, that's okay. I called Thor. Mm. <laughs> so Thor shows up. And Thor's like, I'm finally teaming up with you, Spider-Man. <laughs> and so uh, he's like, Verily, what is this science? I'll yeah. use thunder. No, just just literally take this canister and go up into this in, into the that, lower atmosphere and just throw seem, it up there. That doesn't seem very godlike. Yeah, no, it's fine. So then <laughs> Thor just takes the machine they built and he goes up into space and he just throws it he out. Just puts there. it there. Puts it there and turns it on. And then they all just stand there and wait. <laughs> and then they're like, Okay, we got the news. It really hurt the ozone layer, but it's not doing any more damage. So, okay. net gain! Yay! And they all Yay. throw their arms we up like the they're world in the Empire nobody will know or understand. Yes. It's amazing. Or a problem it shouldn't have had. And, yep. then, uh, and, and then Spider-Man is like... <laughs> Spider-Man's like, nah. And Thor's like, you seem, you seem sad, man of spiders. What's going on? <laughs> Spider-Man's like, we almost cured cocaine addiction, <laughs> but it would have burned a hole in the ozone layer. That sucks. <laughs> Instead, it just damaged the ozone layer. Yeah, like we and didn't we just win. stopped it from getting like so right, like, bad that everyone we didn't died. solve one of our major drug epidemics, and we hurt the ozone layer. And Doc Ock got away. Like I didn't win anything. No, yet. you did not. And you then, narrowly averted catastrophe. Wait, hang on. I'm sorry. Can we just address one thing? How did? Oh, that's right. He had the gun the, to cure Sandman. Yeah. He must have used it. Okay. He yeah, used he it used it real quick. I yeah, completely man. like just plucked yeah. that out I of my memory that. for yeah, a second. Just no, you did. Like, I was okay, like, okay, bam, I fixed it. Oh, and Doc Ock's gone. Yeah. So Peter just like trudges up the stairs, and he sees Mary Jane is there, and then they both say at the same time, "You would not believe the day I had." Uh, and well. then they smile and hug, and that's the book. It's I like, like that Mary Peter's Jane. like, mine was like hijinks, and I was never really in danger, and I was totally going to be fine. And Mary Jane's like, I almost got killed twice. I almost, I almost got killed by two, two creepy different psychopaths. And he's like, oh. 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 You want to have sex now? That's, yes. Can we address the fact that she is wearing what appears to be workout gear or yeah. clothing in the dark? Completely in the dark. Listen, if she, an wants, empty to, building. If she wants to keep that body, that woman is working out. 24-7. Yeah. 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 Like, yep. when she's like, not acting, she's working out. Right. Right. But is this their is this their apartment? Yeah, they have these gigantic windows. Apparently, no furniture. No, it's awesome. Just, just in that one area. Well, where is she gonna work out if they have all this furniture? <laughs> That's her yeah. dance studio. Right. Ah. Oh. You know, she's in like aerobic dance. That's why she's dressed like flash dance. Yeah. But it's awesome. Return of the Sinister what Six. What a weird story. That is this isn't very like, weird. The, like, I, I love that the Sinister Six is always just completely, like, incapable of doing anything. Yep. Yes. They're just total rubes. I love it. In Revenge of the Sinister Six, Doc Ock's like, let's team up again. And they're like, you screwed us over last time. He's like, oh, come on. Come and they're on. they're like, okay. Are any of them like, no, you screwed over the Earth. No. None yeah. of them are like, not cool, Doc Ock. And, and it was by accident? Yeah. So, like... 
what might accidentally happen that you don't plan this time. Right? Yeah. Like, this is really dangerous no. what you're messing I, around I, with. The, the next one's great. I love it because, like, Doc Ock, he again, like, strong arms another university, which just discovered, like, another dimension. And he just, like, goes into it and steals, like, weapons and just gives it to all the guys that he works with. And, <laughs> like, it's so dumb. I can't believe they put Hobgoblin on this team. I know. And they didn't do anything. And then kept him yeah. when they bring this team back. Right, but yeah. it's like. It, it, I know. It, he blows up a he blows up a, a safe. That's what he does. They it's, literally it's had shocker. I know. In the book. In the book. I know. That's like a little fuck you. Yep. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Not shocker. You, shocker. You there suck are a lot of Spider-Man villains you could have used. I was like Sandman. He doesn't want to be here. Right. Yep. I just like that. I just like I've got power over yep. him. And I'm gonna plan for him to betray me. Yeah. That's. I expect him to betray. Me. Yeah. The fact is, I really only needed. Then why'd you call him? I only needed like the four other guys, but Sinister Five. Yeah. No. Well, no. It, I just. It, I, wrote, I think I, it's good I, because aesthetically, he's like, no, no, no. They'll think I'm trying to do a thing. Right. Like, but really, it's the Sinister One. Like, I'm not working with any of you. Right. There is no like, Sinister. I just six. want them to keep. I want them to remember. Yeah. It was also the reason. The real reason is because. Sandman was a member of the original Sinister Six. We want to bring them back, but at this point in continuity, Sandman is not a bad guy. Right. So that's why. That's why. But you can't get the original Sinister Six anyway because you Craven's killed dead. one of them. So it's already just mad. It's only one, so it's fun. She just brought a skeleton. Yeah, yeah. I resurrected him. Yeah. Oh, or there's like a person who's trying to be like the new Craven. Yeah. I'm, like, new craven. I'm, I'm new Craven. I'm, I'm edgy. Yeah, edgy. yeah. And, I'm, and he was in the Sinister Six, so I'm, I'm, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be in the Sinister no, Six. What do you guys? What do you need me to do? I'll do whatever you need. They should have brought. I'm in. new Craven. I'm new Craven. They should I'm have brought in. in the woman they invented in Spider-Man Torment, who was like Craven's lover, yeah. like the yeah. crazy magical Calypso lady oh. that McFarlane invented, and she was the new Craven. But then that would have broken their no dames and broads policy, apparently. What? Because clearly there's it's all a sausage fest. There's oh, no women in this oh, team. Oh, you mean the Sinister Six is yeah. Dames, yeah. I'm just glad that yeah. he wasn't like, I'm going to get the red coat. <laughs> <laughs> no, because yeah. then it muddles the message because he's got the art, he's got the apes. I know. Right. Each member Wait, gets so how ape. many of them are there then? Yeah, there's the Sinister Nine. Like, are, If you consider sentient beings to be members, like, right. no, forget it. it muddles the, it muddies Good. the waters. Yeah. Yeah. No, they could have gotten Scorpion. Yeah, he's just like, I will not call Scorpion. Or Hydro Man. Nope. Or Shocker. Or Shocker. I just won't. No. Hobgoblin. Right. Hobgoblin. There's got to be a goblin creature. I need a living demon. I, th I just think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's the cool. The lizard. The lizard. He's like, listen, here's fine. the problem, though. Like, if I get Scorpion and Vulture and Sandman and Mysterio, it's like mostly green. Yes. All right? We're not doing a thing. Yeah, we're not the I green. I moved away from the green suit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Enough is enough. Yeah, no. I In got fact, Vulture. If, if Osborne had formed the green, team. Yeah. And if he'd gotten. Oh, you mean Octavius? Lizard. Yeah. If yeah, sorry. If Octavius had worn his green outfit. Yes. And if he'd gotten Lizard, they would all have been green. Yes. <laughs> that would have been. Too much. Yeah. They, they could have been the green machine. Or the mean green. <laughs> the mean green <laughs> killing machines. Yeah. Spider-Man would have been like, look at you. You look like a Sylvan Glen. <laughs> I expect Julie Andrews to twirl through you at any second. He's like, no, no, go ahead. Cue up your music. I'll wait for the dance to start. The hills are alive with the sound of assholes. Oh, I was thinking like they're like, they're hip hop. Oh, no. Yeah, they're popping and locking. Anyway, <laughs> Return of the Sinister Six. It's in the description below this video in some kind of collection. It looks fantastic. It, I the love how it looks. Great. I gotta it's say, so I, fun. I, I, I couldn't see it. You know what the problem fully. is, unfortunately? It's... Because like the art's great in some places and not in other places, mm. and it's because there's like there's multiple inkers on this book, uh. and and not even the inkers that are credited. See, some of I... the inkers on this book oh. said they were doing it, but had like a friend do them for oh them. My oh, God. that sucks. No. And Larson's like, I know you're you're. you're no. See you next week. <laughs>